Um, I've made lots of holes in my nice little, nice little, my nice big carbon beam for attaching the um, the four stay fitting. Um, took a lot of uh, thinking and considerating, considerating. There's a good word. Yeah. Consideration um, as to what method to use because um, there's a lot of a lot of different ways to attack this uh, problem. Um, and because I'm dealing with existing parts, it made it a little bit more difficult because I had existing geometry and laminates to deal with. So I came up with um, the transverse pin and two slots arrangement to, um, to do it and try and keep as much of the large uni plank that was in the back of the old mast to um, transfer the stay load into the um, seagull striker and into the mountain gown. for putting the last of the martingale together? Uh, no, this is the last for the four-stay pin reinforcement. Um, now let me see if I remember what you're going to do there. That is the pin through the laundron? Yep, so there's a big 19mm nitronic, because <laughs> I've got nitronic, rod um, pin goes through the laundron and that's what the four-stay uh, will attach to. To start with, it'll attach with the um, our current uh, stainless steel turnbuckle and um, toggle, but eventually we'll swap that out for a um, soft loop and a full furling um, cable as opposed to a stainless steel wire. So um, we'll change the four stay and the furler unit to a um, torque cable, a proper good torque cable and a um, furling unit that um, is integrated into that torque cable instead of a furler unit that sits over the stainless steel wire. But yeah, this is the last of the patching that goes with that. Um, so to make my patching nice and accurate and get my overlaps uh, all nice, you can see here um, I have a template. So this is the half template. Normally I have a full template, but I've lost it somewhere in all my rubbish and I can't be asked um, printing out another copy. But um, that's my patching and my overlap staggers for my patching, which I then transfer onto the plastic. So you can see each layer is transferred onto the plastic. Now, one, two, three, four, five. I cut out my um, carbon uh, that will get laminated to the lower plastic. I wet it out. Then I put this template over the top. I then cut all the patching out with it all wet. And then I put all the patching and I build the patching on the template so that it's all um, staggered and offset. It's then sandwiched between two pieces of plastic. I'll then walk with that sandwiched piece of um, uh, patching out to the launcher on, put it in position on the boat, and then I'll apply the bag to it um, on the boat. So oh, right, so you're not just going to put layer on layer on layer on the launcher on, it's all going to be pre built in here. Build your sandwich in here and then just whack it on. Yeah, so it'll all be wet laminate all stacked with all that overlaps nicely spaced apart and all the rest of it and it'll literally just I walk out with it all pre-laminated and wet whack it on the job stick the vacuum bag over it and suck it down yeah so now I've got to weigh all my materials so I know how much resin I need to mix up and then 
then uh, I'll mix up the required amount of resin. And then are you going to start laminating? Then I'll start laminating. So this is what they um, used to refer to this as wet preg or kiwi preg. So it was a method that was used a lot before pre-preg became the staple method for um, building race boats back in New Zealand. Um, so we used to have big wet out bath machines so that we could actually wet out literally rolls and rolls and rolls of carbon. We'd take those rolls of wetted out carbon and then we'd take them to the boat and roll them out on the boat on the job. So we knew that the fiber had the correct fiber to resin ratios before it actually went on the job. Where's our force day going? Behind, yeah? yeah.
Painfully bouncing around in a dinghy trying to make some holes. Putting the um, anchor point for the inner four stay two to one arrangement in so that we can um, fly our small sails from inboard on the launcher on. Yeah, so I'm making some <coughs> some small slots so that there'll be a soft loop that basically goes around a big uni plank in the back of the uh, lingerie on here. So it'll basically hang off this uni plank. There'll be a uh, thimble here and a uh, friction ring here, and there'll be a two to one arrangement onto the bottom of the furley unit that will go to um, into the forestay of the uh, storm jib and small jib that's what this is so this is the inner forestay attachment point uh, which is completely removable because this is where we can hang our storm sail and trinket uh, from when we sail particularly upwind, which we plan not to do a lot of, if everything goes to plan, but we'll be set up that when it gets windy, instead of half rolling our nice headsail away and destroying the shape of it, we actually pull up the storm jib or trinket, um, which is a small jib, and we fly it instead of our normal Genoa. Okay, so here's your pin. It's my pin. Well, it's my dummy pin, <coughs> so that I can um, put the. Um, Toggle from the forestay in there easily because the actual pin sits flush with the edges of here. So it's quite a neat fit um, and it's not easy to put in and out. So we use the big pin, which is really easy and it's actually a millimeter undersized, so it's floppy, so it's really easy to get in. But Just some more nitronic rod that you found somewhere. Yeah, this is an old side stay off of the the original rig that we use now is our rig. So, yeah, I've just got to make my slots a little bit bigger, just a little bit tight so the toggle won't slip down into the slots right now, which is a bit of a bugger, but anyway, yeah, more sanding, 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 which always. You don't have a tool for that? Tool for what? So what you're doing there, you don't have a tool for that? Yeah, me. <laughs> I'm the <a> tool. <laughs> yeah, that's just a simple ruler and sandpaper and slowly sand it back down to the line. Lee ha, lee ha, lee ha. 
Yeah, he's a Spanish side. Mucha fija. That looks like it's in. Just for the moment. So, give it a little bit more relief at the back. Don't think I need it because it's going to stand up. Somewhere around there. Oh, it's still, yeah. Yeah, still needs some more relief at the back. Pro it will probably grind itself into place. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. Definitely don't want that. We're in the ballpark now. Yeah, you want to explain though why you're wearing my sunglasses? Safety first. Oh my God. Because he's cutting down the four stay. Yeah. Uh, no, not the four stay. This is not the four stay. Oh, yeah, no. Four stay turnbuckle and yeah. furly unit. Just uh, making the attachment point work um, a little better than it did before. Quite a pain in the backside, but getting there. You got my sunglasses to help you anyway. Yeah, that's right. I can look like a twat for uh, a couple of hours while I do this, or I could be blind for the rest of my life. I'll look like a twat for a little while. <laughs> Ah, or you could use your own stuff instead of your wife's. Yeah. Meh. Are you going to make some modifications? Yeah. Well, what are you going to modify? Um, instead of having the tape it off pin, I think I'm going to square the pin up, put a block in here. Um, so I can increase the bearing area and I can lock the pin off in a different manner other than having a cover on it. So. Oh, because originally we were going to put a cover over that nitronic yeah. rod there, yeah, right? Yeah, cover we... over it. And now, what are you going to... You... Weren't you talking about beefing it up a bit too? Yeah, so I'm going to... Um, when I square this up, make the top thicker, um, it gives me more bearing area. Just because I want to increase the safety factor from lots to crazy amounts. Yeah. Okay. But it'll do for the time being, or do we have to do that before we leave? No, do that before we leave. Oh, okay, we'll just add it to your list. Add it to the list, because the list isn't very long.